Mark with Fire Mountain Outdoors, and uh, welcome to episode two on our power station build. There's a lot of different ways you can go with a battery. Um, there's some great channels out there. I, I encourage you to go check out Will Pros. I've watched a lot of his videos. Uh, Hobo Tech has, has got a lot of good solar stuff. I could have made my own batteries, but I didn't really feel all that comfortable. And I and I because we're looking at hey, this is gonna power my water and stuff. I wanted to go premium somewhere and I and I chose to go with the batteries. You can you can definitely make your own battery packs and use lesser batteries, but I went with Battleborn and I and I don't regret it. They're they're expensive, but they're made in the USA, they're highly regarded. Uh, they're top-notch stuff. It's got like a 10-year warranty, which is crazy for a battery from where I come from. So uh, I splurged. They had uh, they had like a Black Friday sale on Blems. I'm also a sucker for Blems because uh, especially something that's going to be sitting at the bottom of a box, I don't care what it looks like. So I did get a discount on these. I'm not sponsored by any of these people, um, but I went premium on the Battleborns. So I went to go put them in this box and they didn't fit just by like like a quarter of an inch i couldn't i couldn't cram them in and they have these ears and because i i did spend a ton of money on them and mainly for that warranty i wanted to make sure that i couldn't that i didn't void the warranty so i did uh, i sent an email and i put in a phone call to battleborn and they assured me uh yeah hey go ahead and cut those off make it work um that's not going to be an issue we're not going to void your warranty people do it all the time and and in fact they gave me a great tip they said uh but you know be cautious and just use a hacksaw and use the side as a guide and, and it'll be a little bit slower but it'll be better and um uh, and i thought that you know what that's that's a wise thing because i could get after it with a sawzall or a porta band and then screw it up so i'm taking their advice and we're gonna cut these ears off so i can get them to fit in this box So we got the the battery, the straps, we got those trimmed off. And now these, I, I tri-fitted those batteries in here and they fit like a glove. It's almost like this box was made for it. So I'm super happy about that. But when I did set them in, I noticed that there are some rivets that are from the exterior corner protectors. And those encroach in on the in on our space and over time and vibration and riding around in trucks that's going to wear a hole in the case of these and i don't know if it's going to short it out or what but i don't want to damage these batteries uh they cost a lot of money so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put some uh, lath in the bottom to raise raise the batteries up just a little bit so that the we've got a good surface for them to sit on and then i'm going to shim them on the sides cut a piece of wood those rivets are just about an inch so just over an inch uh, make some spacers on the side to hold the batteries and um, and then go from there so that's one thing you want to consider whenever you're putting your batteries in make sure nothing's going to rub a hole in the side of Let's place these in there. I've got wood in there. Now I'm going to put these in in this orientation because I'm going to hook these up in parallel. So I want them in the same orientation. And they are in there and they are secure. And... I think I like that. I got space in the middle. I can add some of the components. I got space in the top where I can put all of my outlets. This is going to work out well. All right, we got the batteries in. Now I think we're going to figure out how to mount the inverter. Now the inverter, this is a <laughs> it's a flame zone. So if you're ever going to buy some kind of a electric component. Uh, to put inside your camper to keep yourself safe. Um, maybe they should have named it something different <laughs> than Flame Zone. But uh, 
I did have to, I went premium on the batteries. I went less expensive with the inverter. There's a lot of high dollar options. I wanted a pure sine wave. You gotta have a pure sine wave inverter. And there's some that advertise that they are and they're not, but so this was kind of the, this was kind of the, the point of value that I, that I went with here. It has a couple of things that I desired. It does have the terminals. Um, so you can, you can wire directly to it without using the plug. Um, I decided that I'm not actually going to use that, but that was one of the things that I wanted. Um, it is pure sine wave and, uh, it's got a pretty cool display, um, that tells you what's going on, your voltage, your battery thing. And so that's what we're going to do. So this inverter, we're going to mount in the lid and I'm going to, I'm going to put in a window in the top so I can see that display. So I just need to figure out a couple of things. It's going to take some figuring. One, how I'm going to mount this into the lid. And then because it's going to need some ventilation, I'm, I'm going to end up having to cut some holes over here. And I'm not sure I'm going to protect those from dust and weather, but we want it to be ventilated. But um, that's going to take some figuring. And that's the next thing we're going to do. Then we're going to have to make uh, some jumpers to make these parallel. And then there's going to be a lot of figuring on layout as far as I've got battery inputs. Um, so I need 12 volt inputs and I need 12 volt outputs and I need USB outputs for charging phones and electronics and I need 120 volt inputs and outputs hopefully all done while it's the lids closed and it's all sealed up so um, that's going to take some figuring but that'll be in the next episode hey thanks for coming along for this adventure and uh, made in China <laughs> flames them <laughs> <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> hey everybody, please like and subscribe.